Good morning. Okay. <clears throat> Continue to teach on the prayer of Samandabada. Ma In the prayer explains again that remember there is one nature for everything but two parts and two results. <coughs> that is the whole idea and topic Um, of this prayer, the Samandabhada. One nature, but two parts and two results. <clears throat> that is the topic about the prayer. And the prayer begins explained the ground, right? The basic nature. And we, most of you know, and we explained about the basic nature with at least, I think, 15 qualities according to this prayer. When we explained the ground, the basic nature. So, you know, that shows and tells us that we all have the same nature. And with the recognition of that basic nature, that's that ground, we can take the path of uh, liberation, enlightenment. And the path to liberation uh, it again begins with the uh, primordial uh, wisdom, uh, which is the self-liberation. Uh, and it um, leads to the enlightenment, perfect enlightenment, uh, that is the result of freedom from samsara, freedom from suffering. So actually, <clears throat> we talked and we explained about the path of liberation already, right? So this, uh, actually, if you think about the prayer, the subject, uh, the, the topic is amazing. First, you know, you uh, see the, the ground, the basic nature for everything. Then prayer sort of explain in two ways uh, because the two parts. Uh, so we have two parts, that's, that's why we have to resolve. So the one part is, is about the enlightenment, the liberation, the nirvana. So we uh, already done that. We explained that well. Uh, <clears throat> so you all, most of you know uh, that path. Now the other path is the path to samsara and the worst one. And it's, uh, no, it's not. They're same. They're <laughs> equally same. Nirvana and samsara, nothing. Uh, According to uh, this teaching, uh, 
there is a <clears throat> nothing distinction between samsara and libera uh, liberation, you know. Uh, you can't say one is bad, one is good. It's like your hand, your, your you know, it's just uh, your hand, it's fr front and back. So you can't say one is bad or the other is good. So, but we, uh, today we uh, explain the path, the samsara, and it begins with the ignorance. Uh, and it continues on the, remember, 12 lengths of the interdependent origination. So these 12 lengths describes how we continue to be reborn into samsara. And from spiritual point of view, uh, when we investigate uh, why we are suffer, because we will see two different reasons, the original cause and the conditions. So our, <clears throat> for example, current life is, according to Buddhism, the result from our past life. And in addition, uh, this life will be the cause of our future life. Uh, but I'm not saying here to try to sort of convince you about the future life if you don't believe it. But it's very important to think about it, who we are and where we come from. According to Buddhism, this life is not appears without cause and condition. And what happened between our previous life and this life, then the enlightened uh, masters, the teachers, have found the result, sort of real the source of suffering. They said uh, negative emotions. We have, according to this prayer, doubt, attachment, anger, pride, jealous, and ignorance. We have six sort of negative emotions. These are the origin or cause that keeps us in the samsara, the cycle of life. And from negative emotions comes uh, negative actions, right? Uh, negative uh, verbal action, physical action, and mental action. So negative emotions come negative actions. From negative actions comes, of course, negative karma, and negative karma comes sort of karmic uh, consequence, you know. So that's why uh, Buddha said that uh, we have to take sort of responsibility for ourselves and for our actions. Action is big words, I mean, in Tibet, action is there are so many ways, verbal action, mental action, physical action, that's all. So if Buddha say we are responsible, our action means like it's, it's just a big, big thing. Um, it's difficult, but it's important. It's, 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 uh, it's the right thing to do because when we see that uh, there is a problem, then we can fix it, right? So that's why we are responsible. Our negative karma, negative uh, actions, negative emotions, these are sort of, you know, uh, causes and conditions. So, for example, the Tovalings are talking about 
cause and conditions of our life. We understand that all sentient beings with a mind and a life will change by cause and conditions. So that's why uh, we say that everything is dependent on its cause and conditions. So when we're talking about the total links, the, te the dependent origination, I don't know how many of you are familiar with this. This is, this is actually the total links talks about the samsara, how we continue, right? <clears throat> I'm not going to teach you the total links today, but it's very important. Uh, but there, when we talk about the total links, the dependent origination, uh, there are actually two kinds of dependent origination, the total links. One kind uh, deals with uh, the outside, right? How they appear, the things. There is the total links there. And then the other kind of dependent origination, the total links, is about the living beings. It's kind of insight about talking about sentient beings. So everything included outside and inside, I mean, things and beings. So, so there are two links, and each link is the cause of the follow-on link, and each follow-on link is the effect of Prabhu's link. Um, so that is just, and briefly, that is just how everything to continue to be reborn into samsara or this world. But we are talking here now is the, <coughs> the path of samsara. So according to this prayer, the samsara is about the six realms, right? So the cause, so also the, uh, this prayer explains the cause of the six realms. Uh, these are the, the six negative emotions, sort of in general. Remember, we already uh, talked about the attachment and anger. So these two uh, negative emotions, which are the most cause of hungry ghost and hilarum, right? Do you remember that last time we talked about it? So, for example, anger is caused to reborn uh, hilarum, right? It doesn't mean like the, the, these living beings don't have other negative emotions, but the anger is the main cause. So something like that. So today, uh, the prayer discuss the negative emotion of arrogance or the pride, which is the cause of God room. And also, it shows that the, the connection of pride with the wisdom of, remember, equanimity. So here the prayer says, do you have the prayer? When one's mind becomes considered, you have the prayer? One's mind becomes considered and an attitude of uh, spirity arises. Fierce pride is born. Thus, beings suffer experience of, uh, how you say this? In incessant. In incessant. Incessant. I don't like these words, incessant quarreling and fighting. Yeah, this is not correct word for Tibetan, which means I don't familiar. <laughs> <coughs> I understand the meaning. That, that's the kind of meaning, but I think we can, uh, we can translate uh, better than this. Uh, when the 
And then when the fruit of that action happens, beings are born as gods who experience death and downfall. That is the today's topic, okay? So this is so important to understand. Considered mind means, you know, in Tibet, considered mind means like full of itself. That is the, that is the meaning. I don't know in English, but in Tibet, according. Okay, so which means, um, which means we look on others as lower than we are, and we also speak to them that way, you know. So we usually sort of show others our sort of, what do you call it, the arrogance, the pride. Then with the pride, we develop some sort of bad attitudes about others, and then immediately sort of follow in this action of body and speech based on arrogance will arise. So that's talking here. So in this case, pride and arrogance are our problem. And in Buddhism, Buddhist point of view, pride and arrogance begin with, remember, the simple notion of uh, cleaning, ego cleaning. We can see that from the basic sort of fundamental ignorance, we have already developed the seed of pride. And no matter how much we are in control, our uh, control of our pride, we still have it. We still have. So it's important to be aware of this uh, negative emotion of pride because, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is very sort of dangerous and destructive. It blocks us from uh, according to <clears throat> Tibet, we say if you are pride or you have, it sort of blocks you from improving yourself because uh, having a pride means the end of, end of our growing, the end of our development according to Buddhism especially. Uh, whenever we have pride in our practice or our study of Dharma, that's the end of any development in that sort of particular practice. Because, because it's like you try to pour a water on an upside down a pot, you know. It doesn't keep the water, right, how much you pour. So when our mind sort of becomes pride, we develop an attitude problem because of the pride, because of the arrogant. Therefore, there's nothing sort of more to learn. So that, that is usually the definition of pride. So we always have the if we have sort of, you know, this negative, with these negative emotions, we always have the sense of seeing others' faults, always others' faults. And we think that we are doing sort of better than someone else. It's best, best on the selfish, right, the ego cleaning, but it's, it's also the negative emotions of pride. Uh, something wrong, we always sort of blame other, the other side, not inside ourselves. We are always better than ourselves. It's exactly the same. For example, as much as, you know, I'm, for example, thinking that I'm doing better than others, you know, while looking at someone, and this person is doing Exactly the same thing while looking at me. I'm doing better than you. What are you talking about? You know, they always think that, right? That's, that's kind of, you know, the nature, you know, like this relative 
in emotions. <laughs> that is the problem. So today we're talking about here in this prayer, uh, pride, uh, arrogance. Uh, that is the problem. For example, if two a uh, couple of people fighting, you know, each other with emotion of pride and anger. Think about this. Both people sort of looking at each other with the same kind of uh, um, uh, 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 the um, considered mind. Uh, then the problem is you can't fix it, the situation, because you both have two different uh, directions, you know. That's the problem we have always. We fight each, each other because we have actually two different directions, two different thoughts. If both people say, you know, oh, I have been wrong, very wrong, and both sort of accept the situation, then both you have one direction, you know then there is no problem. But we always have two directions because of the pride, because of the arrogance. I am doing better than you. And the other person thinks I am better than you. So we have two different directions, two different kind of, there also there are two paths. And then you can fix your problem, can put, you know, the situation. So the opposite of the pride is humble, right? Humble. It's very important to be a humble person, so important, you know. Uh, one of my root teachers was very, very humble, you know. It's just amazing. I think it is, uh, it is usually, it is a very good sign for a good teacher and good sort of meditator. Because to me, it shows that this person has sort of less ego and less selfish mind. It being very humble and respect everybody and saying, you know, your words also humble. Action, verbal, right? Physically, you are very humble. Mentally, you saying your, your words so nice, right? So that shows like less ego. More people, more like the arrogant people have big egos. I am better than everybody. So I think according to Buddhism, to being a humble person is very good sign. It's, it's, it, it means like you control your ego and your selfish and uh, negative emotions, you know. So uh, negative emotion or pride is always not good to have. And uh, don't misunderstand the, for example, between the pride and confidence or or courage, you know. Uh, for example, we need confidence, right? But we don't need pride. Because sometimes uh, people really uh, misunderstanding between the positive emotions and negative emotions. For example, I give you some, for example, like the between love and attachment. Lots of people misunderstand they are same, very similar, love and attachment. Also between this, pride and confidence. They are, they are not the same, but most people think same. And then also the difference between faith and desire. You know, they are very kind of similar, right? And also for the meditators, like, uh, always misunderstand between, like, uh, experience and realization, you know, they think, oh, I meditate, I, I saw Guru Rinpoche, I have this experience, this and that, I'm very now, it's high level, it's, you know, people misunderstand it, right? The experience is experience, 
But realization is totally different than experience. All of, you know, all of this kind of you know, emotions are uh, very similar if you don't understand their characters in detail, you know, then <clears throat> misleading, you know. According to Buddhism, these emotions are very different um, because of the most, actually, the motivation. Motivations are totally different. That's why uh, the definition of these emotions are different. For example, we talked so many times Love and compassion are very different than attachment, right? Because of the character and the uh, motivation, very different. For example, here we're talking about the pride, um, having the negative emotion of pride brings you the end of, for example, end of your knowledge. And having the uh, confidence or courage brings you the development, right? Development of your knowledge. So it's, it's different, you know? So uh, that, is the, that is about the pride, you know? Do you understand? Now the prayer says here, the fruit of the action of pride rapens, we experience the, the realm of, of the gods. Now we, we should uh, talk a little bit about the god realm. In the god's realm, they have so much happiness uh, because uh, they have the joy of uh, the material wealth as well as the joy of peace and the mental wealth too because of the peace. Uh, at the level of the God's realm, according to Buddhism, it is said that they have developed tremendous Pride. It is because they have the pride of thinking that they have achieved the highest state of wealth, of joy, of happiness. They think they think they're in free and liberation. Enlightenment, because of this enjoyment, the happiness, the peacefulness, everything they experience. But there is great experience of suffering in this realm. Because it is said that gods can actually predict their death when it will happen. And they can see after the death also where they, uh, you know, be reborn. So usually Buddhist philosophy, they talks about these five or six, uh, usually they call it like super knowledge, you know. Uh, or in English we call it the, the five sort of clairvoyance, you know, you can predict, you can, you can read someone else's mind, right? So for example, like gods, they can see and also like hear from very far away, you know? So they have the, uh, they say like the clairvoyance of the eyes of the, you know, the gods or hear, you know? So they can really predict in the future what will happen. They call it the relative Buddhist point of view, relative prediction. You know, it's not the genuine, but they they have this sort of capacity. So, at the time of death, 
when that karma is finished and it's time to sort of depart from their realm of the gods to somewhere sort of less happiness, there is the experience of really tremendous suffering. So actually, one week in the God's room is a long, long time for human's life, human's year. Like for example, according to uh, what my perfect teacher remember, uh, one day is the God's room is 100 human years, human life. So one week is about how many? Like 700, 700 years of us, I think, for the, the gods. So that's like same thing. We also can sort of uh, compare to the humans' years in life with uh, animals' life, right? Their years, their like cat, dog, like what they say, like our uh, one year. Cat, dogs like 12 years? No, seven. Yeah, that's right, seven years. Something like that. So, you know, so gods, they're, they're, they're really long years, you know. So, for example, when we think about like seven days, if we are enjoying something, then, you know, seven days, the time feels so short, right? But if we are experiencing very hard time, then even like one hour feels so long. How we think, that's this kind of things, how it's our experience. So in the God's realm, one week is very long if they, if they experience of suffering. And in the God's room, there is no, uh, the problem is the genuine path to liberation. Because they develop a wrong view, you know. Because until the time of death, they thought they had reached some sort of uh, sense of liberation or enlightenment. So then they realized that they have to go back. At that point, they lose sort of their faith in, 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 in karma, you know. So they develop wrong view towards cause and, cause and effect. Um, that results in more sort of suffering and more negative actions in the future. So we call it God's realm is also samsara. No matter how much sort of material wealth they enjoy, they are still suffering. So therefore, Samandabhada making the aspiration to, uh, in this prayer, to recognize the nature of pride, which is the nature of Buddha wisdom. The pride, this negative emotion, is the main cause of the uh, reborn into the God's role. So if you reborn there, some level you are very happy, enjoy, but another level you are really suffering because you are still in samsara. There is no genuine path to liberation. So therefore, uh, some of the Buddha prayer here, the aspiration is, you know, you have to recognize that the nature of pride. And we are aware of that emotion of the pride, and we are trying to recognize the emotion itself without trying to be something else, according to this prayer, you know, because the nature of emotion itself uh, beautiful and uh, infinite and genuine, you know. That's why, according to this prayer, talking only the nature itself, whatever emotion arises. 
you don't have to um, change. If we if we changed the nature into sort of something else, then it will be not the genuine. It will be very uh, ugly, very uh, opposite of the genuine. So you know, we always try to change, right? And then not its nature, and then it causes problem. So the, you know, we can't, we don't have to change, for example, uh, the antidote for this, this negative emotion of pride. You just recognize it's a nature, that's, that, that's all, nothing else, you know. If you change, then it will problem. For example, like some, uh, uh, some flowers grow uh, only, uh, only in water, right? Water flower, only water. And if you sort of let them grow uh, there, then, uh, you know, they have uh, lots of good qualities, lots of uh, sort of beauty things. It's on nature. It will arise, right? But if you pick them up and then put somewhere else, like in a pot, then become very ugly. You know, I mean, you know, it's no more sort of show the beauty things because you, um, you changed into ugly, you know, because you changed its conditions and its nature. So whenever you try to change, for example, the flower into something else, the problem starts. Even if you try to change, it doesn't work. So what I'm trying to say is that in this prayer, uh, teaches us uh, to remain the, the nature state of whatever emotions we have and arise. We don't need anything else. <coughs> so if we are able to maintain our meditation in this natural state, then the wisdom of the uh, the eco uh, no, yeah eco the equality will uh, develop right. Then our the arrogance the negative emotion will be transformed into. Uh, this wisdom, the uh, what do you call it? Economy, ec economy, economy to wisdom. Because we are going to see that the nature of everything in one single, one nature, right? Equal sort of state of wisdom. So that's why if you try to recognize its nature, the pride of the negative emotion, its nature, the nature of pride is uh, equanimity and the wisdom of the equanimity. Uh, in Rigpa, and the, 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 the nature of uh, awareness. All the objects completely dissolve in a state of equanimity. In this case, if you practice uh, the nature of uh, pride itself. Because why they say that equanimity wisdom? Because there is no distinction between good, bad, and this natural state of mind. So that's why uh, this prayer says, through my aspiration as the Pramodir Buddha, may considered beings relax, relax their mind as it is. Restore self-refreshing awareness and attain 
here it says, attain the wisdom of equal, uh, equality. That's why, you know, so this, this sort of aspect of rigpa uh, or the awareness is known as equanimity wisdom because there is no good and bad nature itself. So that's why this prayer, you know, if we don't recognize the nature of pride, the negative emotion, then it is, it is the cause of samsara. But opposite of that, it's not really opposite, it's transformed into like the equanimity wisdom. So if, you, you know, uh, you know, if you know how to sort of liberate your thoughts, this, this emotion, and how to recognize, then it doesn't matter what kind of feeling, what kind of thought arises, and how many times your mind wander away, because you immediately recognize uh, your thoughts, the essence. Um, it brings you like it's you know immediately you recognize you remember it and then then just to relax there right so you wander away and immediately you see it, you recognize and you just relax there there's nothing nothing else you need to do it's just you know and by doing that over over and over again millions of times your meditation practice begins to training you and how to stay without wander away. It can help you learn how to continue open and without losing, losing the self-awareness, self-liberation. So in this way, your meditation can help you to sort of discover and experience the inner peace, which is, in this case, the wisdom of uh, equality, the economy. That is the antidote for the, this negative emotion. So this, this is very nice prayer, you know, uh, talking about the six realms and its causes which means we really understand the characters and definition of the six negative emotions because we need to understand this because we, we, are, we really experience these negative emotions every single day. The prayer Samanda Bada is not really talking something that we'll never experience. He's actually talking about our lives, you know, relatively and ultimately. So relatively, we really need to understand the negative emotions, and ultimately, when they arise, we need to know how to recognize and how, you know, <coughs> uh, to stay sort of without losing the self-awareness, self-liberation that's within us 24 hours. So it helps sort of discover this inner peace, inner mind, and develop the wisdom of equality. That's for today. Uh, now, for the meditation, we should, of course, first we need sort of correct, correcting our motivation, which is generate a positive, positive motivation for all living beings, right? And then, <clears throat> And then focus on
alternate between look at it, looking at the mind and then relax on it. That is the method. Looking at your mind and then relax. Looking at mind and then relax. Looking at your mind, 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 then relax. Thank you. Hundred times. Looking at mind, relax. Looking at mind, relax. <laughs> Looking at mind, relax. That is the antidote of pride. Looking at yourself. Do you think you are better than everybody? Of course, one way you are, <laughs> but not necessarily all the time. There is a good things in, in each individual. There is a good things. There is a bad things in our mind. Physically, mentally, emotionally, good things we have, bad things we have. So <clears throat> good thing, for example, we have confidence. I can, I can practice. I can meditate. Eventually, then I can attain liberation. I have Buddha nature. That's a good thing. That's called confident. You sort of recognize that you have a Buddha nature. You have a potential. You have this seed of enlightenment. But that's just to you understand that's not enough. So that you think, oh, I can do and I need to meditate. That's what we call confident. But you think, oh, I'm, I have a Buddha nature. I'm better than everybody. So I just, it, it's just enough. That is the pride. It's end of your knowledge, end of your development. So that's why, you know, so when the pride, the, the negative emotion arise, you look at that and then relax on it. And you can sort of, uh, you know, enter more deeply into the experience of the self-awareness and then relax on it. So that's meditation. Focus your attention on this sort of pure uh, nature of the mind. If you want, when you breathe in, right? If you want also, let your mind and your breath dissolve into the space of promodier or the great emptiness and recognize that nature and concentrate on this very vast and great emptiness when you breathe out. So if you want to practice this kind of meditation, if you want to practice with your breath, you can do that. All you just do, you know, look at your mind and then relax. And the arrogance, if these negative thoughts and uh, negative pride, uh, this emotion actually very, very dis distraction, discursive thoughts. If this, uh, this will arise, remember, in this prayer, do not accept them. And do not reject them. Just look in it, your mind, and then relax. Just to remain in the present moment. If you accept the negative thoughts, you are thinking past time. If you, uh, no, no. The, if you reject these negative emotions, you are thinking past time. 
If you accept these negative emotions, you are going to follow and you are thinking the future thoughts. So that's why in this prayer it says, do not accept, do not reject, just to remain in the present moment and relax. Simply sort of watch them come and go and to return to the awareness of mind's nature. And, 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 and do not try to change anything, just to relax, right? So if you do this meditation, then you really perceive the result is like all objects. Still you see and experience, but without grasping, without attachment, without anger, all these negative emotions without just to appear. Therefore, therefore, in a prayer today here, it is known as the wisdom of equanimity. That's the result of this meditation. Understand? Okay. Let's meditate on 15 minutes. If you want to change your posture, that's fine. And then relax. This is, this is nature, very beautiful sounds, right? If I touch, become ugly. It's changed. So you just continue, listen, it's nature, and relax. <laughs> <laughs> 